Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, the Two Opinionated podcast could really use your help. And it's easy. It's free. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, imdb.com, named us a top 100 podcast. We came in at number 82. That's a big deal because there's 15 million podcasts and growing. So to be named to anybody's top 100 list, pretty big deal for us. And the way you can help is to go to imdb.com, look up the Two Opinionated podcast, and that's it. Just bringing our page up. That traffic really helps us out. Our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. All we ask is that you subscribe. It's also free, but that really helps us to attract these amazing guests that we keep bringing on the program. And that's it. Two easy ways for you to support us, and we would really appreciate the help. Now let's get to that interview. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I am so excited today. I've got actor, writer, Milkania Diaz Rojas with me. So welcome. Hello. How'd I do? Did I butcher it too bad? You said it perfectly. Milkania, yeah. Aw. Milkania, Milkania. Either Kenya, way. Yeah, yeah. It's so pretty when you say, say it in Spanish. Milkania. Yeah, it's so much better. <laughs> 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 well, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to talk with you. I think uh, uh, your acting is is really, really, you're talented. Pretty good. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's the, um, the best compliment. I think the if I, I was trying to go back to figure out what the first thing I had seen you in, and it may be, it may be the bold type. That's, that's probably what it is. But it might be you did something with... Um, Ah, uh, shoot. I wrote it down. Oh, uh, uh, Zoe Lister uh, Jones. Uh, yeah, yeah. Slip. Was that it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That may have been the first one that I've seen you in. That was so fun. Like, honestly, that was pretty much the first uh, scene I got to really just, like, let loose and <laughs> be kind of crazy. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I really like her, and she's a talented writer uh, mm -hmm. as well as an actress. She does a lot of her own um, stuff. But so I watched... For her, but I noticed you did a really good job in that. Thank you. Thank I you. always I do that when as the crazy girlfriend. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you nailed that role. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, I always I try when I'm prepping. Her was I... Crazy because she was she was starring in it. She wrote it and she was directing. So I know. Was really, like going back to the monitor and coming back, and that that was really inspiring. Yeah, she's she's impressive. I um I loved her in Life in Pieces, and uh, she was on there with um, uh, Angelique Cabral uh, was another actress. And I just had her on, and I did the same thing. I was going through kind of prepping, and seeing what else I had seen her in, and there was two or three that Zoe had wow. written, directed, starred in. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's insane the talent. That, have you ever, and, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but have you ever uh, thought about the stepping behind the camera doing the directing? Yeah, that's definitely something that I want to do in the future. And I think uh, right now I'm just a little bit more focused on all the aspects, learning everything that I yeah. can from production to to writing my own piece now. And in the future, I definitely want to be able to kind of give that artistic vision. I know I help a lot of people with self tapes, like every other actor does. So being right. able to like, you know, give notes and kind of get in the practice of direction and having, you know, your opinion and sharing that has been something that I really enjoy. You know, I'm, I, that's, that's actually a pretty good point. Nobody has ever brought that up with, with me before, but being able to give notes to another actor or actors, uh, that is pretty similar to some of the aspects of directing. And that's, mm -hmm. yeah, if you can give notes, if you can not not really critique someone else's performance, mm -hmm. but but give them some, you know, positive. Yeah, like actual type of thing. tangible notes. Yeah, like then you should probably be able to direct. It's just a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of the technical aspects that I still need to learn. Yeah. Um, but I am definitely going to work towards shadowing a couple directors so yeah. that I can kind of get my feet wet and go from there. You need a, uh, 
you need to get on a show that runs for like a decade. And yeah. at some point they'll probably ask you to direct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm putting that out there. Yeah, okay. put that out there. We're yes, just throwing you know, that out there a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so let, let's back up. Let's start this way. You know, tell me a little bit about what got you into acting. Because that's a tough profession. What, what made you want to go into that? Yeah, I think when I started, I didn't really realize how tough <laughs> it was. But uh, I I really wanted to get into acting in the eighth grade. And I remember begging yeah. my dad to let me go to this art school that we have here, Topo Sweet Arts. And I ended up going there. And I... I I was kind of like dabbling, but still young, you know, wasn't really mm-hmm. taking it fully serious. And then coming out of college, you know, I was studying something else, I was studying business and I was playing basketball and all that. And I realized that I just really still had this itch and desire to start acting. So when I started acting, like I said, I didn't really realize too much about it, but what made me fall in love with it was when I was taking classes and I kind of like the first initial desire was to be able to, you know, come out of my shell. Right. Or to like, um, kind of just like release things that I didn't really get to be in my own life. Are you, are you an introvert? I was an introvert, but I would say I'm like, a an introverted extrovert when I'm out with my friends you know I'm very social but I do appreciate my time alone yeah, right right very right. much yeah uh so I wouldn't say I'm an introvert right now but but I definitely appreciate my time by myself <laughs> well yeah I, I say I'm, I'm that way I um I would describe myself as an introvert but because I spend all my time talking with people I've gotten pretty comfortable mm-hmm. you know being a, around people or having a conversation and stuff but I still need the downtime after yeah that's, I would say like nice. most of my friends would probably say I'm more of an introvert because I like to like I don't go out a lot and even yeah. like yeah. now during the season like I I was went to all these events and stuff and I had fun so that's why I don't know if I'm like still an introvert but all my friends would probably say that I am <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well yeah. you're a pretty good basketball player yeah I I could defend myself there yeah. But yeah, I mean, sorry, sorry. I got a little little carried away there. <laughs> I, I ended up kind of falling in love with acting yeah. after taking classes and kind of uh, learning to kind of appreciate the sides of myself that I kind of kept to myself. And in doing that, I felt like I really uh, came out of my shell and um, discovered more of who I was and felt like I accepted myself a lot more through yeah. my work. Because, you know, when, when you go to do a character that's... Uh, so unlike yourself you really discover that there's so much that is the same right from from yourself and it's like really revealing at the time but afterwards you kind of like come to accept it and it doesn't seem so crazy or bad or like you know you don't have to judge it because you can't judge a character that you're gonna play so well that's right that's right yeah because if you judge them it may affect the performance (laughs) exactly so like if you go into it not judging the character then you're kind of like oh wait I I judge myself on that I'm pretty hard on myself so yeah let me stop doing that (laughs) well something to keep in mind when you're directing yourself Mm. that you're starring in yeah have some grace (laughs) yeah don't be too hard on yourself (laughs) no that's 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 pretty good so when when you started out did you start out more on the theater side or did you go straight into you know like a commercials acting type of role I did a couple short films um, back in the day and then like I ended up so I haven't done theater but when I went to the art school we did study theater um, theater pieces and then in the acting classes that I've taken we we will often do like plays in class yeah yeah so So you've had some experience with it just not maybe I haven't done in front of an audience in a theater yeah yeah yeah, that's pretty good. Does the uh, does being an athlete help you as far as the um, stunt work and the physical side of acting, or are you still at the point where they're they're not really letting you do that? <laughs> oh well, uh, the first uh, lead that I did, I actually asked them to let me do my own stunts. Yeah. So, and I don't think they probably had a budget for a stunt person, anyways. But. Um, <laughs> I actually trained in in a martial arts for about a month 
leading up to yeah. the film. So I think definitely having that athletic kind of, first of all, mentality, but also yeah. like the athleticism to be able to do something or be willing to definitely helps. And I do want to do my own stunts in the future. So, well, yeah, um, you should. Cause I think it just, um, it broadens your tool belt, mm -hmm. but it also makes you more marketable because they don't have to bring in extra people. <laughs> yeah. And I've always like been so inspired by Jackie Chan and like Zoe Saldana, who's another yeah. Dominican. So, so yeah. 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 That, that makes, uh, uh, makes complete sense. What was your, what was your position in basketball? I was a shooting guard. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. Yeah. yeah. I was curious. I was like, well, maybe she's taller than. I'm five foot seven. Like I'm almost. Five foot seven's eight. a decent size. Yeah, it's above average. For a shooting guard, especially, yeah. it's probably a little tall. Uh, yeah, it depends. You know, like the higher, the higher up in in like professionalism, the bigger. The yeah. Well, that's true. Has, right. So. That's true. I yeah. saw a um, clip of a gentleman. He's playing college somewhere, but he's seven foot nine. And they showed him like he he high fived a guy that was seven one, and I mean he looked like he was my height. You know, I'm five eight, yeah. and it's just I've that's that's pretty tall. Yeah, <laughs> and I feel like LeBron's probably six foot seven, and like most of the people in the NBA are are that height. Yeah. That's average. Yeah, that's kind of average. Yeah, but, of course, but even you know, in like WNBA, like they're tall. They're really tall. They're so tall. I know. I, I'm enjoying the um, the fact that women's basketball is becoming very popular. It's about Me too. they're such good athletes. I, I I've enjoyed that. Yeah, I you know I always like I started playing basketball a little late, like in high school. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the people who I ended up playing with uh, at the end of high school had been playing since they were in middle school, elementary oh, yeah. school, and stuff like that. So I never really. Like my ambitions as an athlete weren't to go to the WNBA. Right. I really just like hope to get a scholarship or a, a bursary or something, and I was happy with that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. If it if it helped pay for college, yeah, and you enjoyed doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, it's it's that one of those things. Like you know, when you play it for so long you get so attached like there's so many emotions attached to like the wins right. and losses and your teammates and and yeah it really does feel like you go to war with your teammates like you go out I know. To war. <laughs> yeah there's no um there's no i there, there's it's difficult to explain the camaraderie on mm. a team to somebody that's never experienced it if that makes yeah sense. someone who isn't an athlete like just like how ick losing feels, you know? <laughs> how like, yeah. you know, like I've never been a sore loser, but like I I would whatever, however a tournament would end up going home and like just being oh just so mad. I know, isn't that it's it's really when you think about it, it's a little silly. But we, it is. most of us are built that way though. You know, you get yeah. like like my my week can get messed up based on whether or not teams I like won. <laughs> and that's so silly. Yeah, like, I would laugh at that, but I know so many people that <laughs> are like that. And, like, if I were playing, I would feel that way, too. Yeah, I know. I know. But now you're acting, so you can just draw on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Have you got to play like a basketball player yet? So this is what I tell almost everyone. The, my full circle moment is – that when I left college, so I, I dropped out of college and I'm just like, I'm going to give this acting a shot. So I, I put basketball completely to the side. Yeah. And the first role that I booked, I had to like have a basketball tryout for it. <laughs> and that was like share HBO share. And it was like a group of, of teammates. And I literally was a basketball teammate to, to the lead. And then that's a the soft same, landing for an acting role. <laughs> yeah, the same week I booked a, a commercial where I was playing basketball. So I'm just like, 
oh, okay, like nothing was in vain. I'm on the right path. Everything's working out. And yeah, that was. Don't you think the universe kind of works that way? You may not know why you're doing something, you know, what, what's the purpose, but Mm -hmm. at some point you're like, oh, that's why I did that. (laughs) Yeah. I always know that like everything happens for a reason and there's always a purpose for everything, but but that was just like kind of like a ha ha. You got me, God. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so so let's talk a little bit about forty acres. Mm-hmm. All right. So tell me about that one. What's the what's the project? What's it about? You know, what's your what's your role with it? So forty acres is this post apocalyptic thriller, and it's really the story about a family who who has had to fight for their survival but because of everything that's happened around them and the history of what's going on and the scarcity of food and uh, of resources they've really kind of been the mother who's played by Danielle Deadweiler she kind of takes on this military mom role and she trains her her family to kind of be able to defend themselves and kind of kill whoever comes on their property yeah yeah like, you know, and so, so is the my, property 40 acres. Yeah, it's 40 okay. acres of, of farmland, yeah, of yeah. farmland that they have. So they're able to like grow their own food and kind of survive on their own where everyone else is pretty much struggling. But they've got the, you know, the brains and, and everything. Well, yeah, so if they've got food, they obviously are going to have to defend it. Yeah, everybody's probably looking for food. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that sounds so, pretty good. Yeah, it's it's. Honestly, watching it was really surreal because some of the, not gory, but some of the kind of like the way people end up <laughs> dying on it yeah. are, uh, it, it's just so real. It looks so real. And just like being there while we shot it versus seeing it on screen was crazy. Am um, I going to be able to 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 stand to watch it? Because I'm... I'm big. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's not awful. It's not like okay, okay. your stomach's not going to turn or anything. Yeah, okay. Or maybe it will. I don't know. <laughs> it depends how weak your stomach is. Suck it up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, suck it up. <laughs> but um, yeah, my character comes in. She is uh, kind of, she's the love interest and yep. she makes her way onto the property and she's kind of really just. Oh, so she's not a family member. No, okay. no, she's not a family member. She makes her way onto the property and um, is caught by the the Emmanuel, the son who has has seen her before when he kind of snuck off the property and had some time to himself by the lake. And so he kind of already has eyes for me. So he has kind of like this empathetic connection with me already. And that's why he, he he's also one of the softer siblings you know he has he's his uh journey is really like figuring out um his way for himself because he does have a lot of empathy and um and so his journey is that and my journey is you know I'm seeking help for my family as well and I go there I'm a nurse I'm I'm like you know I have this mothering kind of character who really just wants to help my people. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. And so when I come into the picture on their property, they're like, Oh, can we trust her? Is she out to get us? You know, all these things are kind of floating by, but the son is kind of conflicted because he has a connection with me and yeah. I can't give too much more away. (laughs) Yeah. That's actually really good. So you've got the, the whole, sci-fi fantasy elements Mm -hmm. but then in the middle of it you had a little bit of a love story yeah yeah that sounds pretty good to me so is it does it have a release date yet or are you doing the festival circuit how's they're doing festivals right now i know that they have distribution in canada but i know that I, i i don't know if they already have a sale but they are still doing um festivals for for U.S. and worldwide uh, distribution for a theatrical release. And then I don't know where it's going to end up from there, but we don't have an actual release date, or they have not shared it with us. Yeah, yeah. It's coming, though. It's coming next year sometime. That's right. That's right. No, it sounds it sounds awesome. And the festival route, pretty fun way to go. Yeah. Because you, know, you get a lot of eyes on it. You can kind of test mm-hmm. it out a little bit. 
and then mm -hmm. hopefully you get funding and stuff as well and then you can uh you kind of mass market it but i i, I always kind of enjoyed the festival route that's that's kind of fun yeah well it's my it's my first time really being part of a festival like this but the reviews so far have been really great or the ones that i've had the chance to read so it, it's exciting to see you know something that we spent so much so much love and time making and seeing it be received so well and getting to be part of that and yeah i always say like i'm so grateful that they chose me as dawn but this whole experience even tiff has been just like but it's got a pretty strong cast uh, i was looking mm -hmm. at that yeah it's pretty uh pretty well-known cast um yeah. is it based on anything is it based on a book or, or where did you know where the story no, i think that like post covid you know the director who also wrote it and co-wrote it with glenn um glenn taylor and, and rt thorne is the director yeah. he he really based it off of kind of what he felt were some of the fears that came up during covid like what would life be like post pandemic post food shortages you know right. at a time where like people were <laughs> scrambling for toilet paper you know we what i were. mean so yeah literally yeah so. i don't think any of us will ever let the toilet paper run out no yeah. i don't think so because it was the most bizarre thing that people could have been like not even the food or canned you know it was toilet paper that yeah. was the big thing that hit them. we found out real quick what was important to us yeah <laughs> being able to wipe her yeah <laughs> yeah Oh shoot! I think that's really what it was based from, and and I know that he does like some of the shows and things that he's written already do have like a sci-fi um, yeah. element to it. So adding that to it was also another thing. Yeah, not too bad. Where did where did it film at? We shot it in Sudbury, actually. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, you didn't have to go too far. No, no, it, it felt like. <laughs> It felt far for me because it's like a five hour drive and yeah. it was my first time uh, being away from my daughter for that long. She's still little. So, so I had to go back and forth. Um, it felt far. Yeah, that can be hard. How, how old is she? She's three and a half now. So she oh, was yeah. So she's old enough to know that mom's not there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was two and a half at the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's hard. So I'm in the, uh, the, the grandfather stage. I'm a pop all. Oh. That. so so they're all they go from one to five i've got five of them um okay. but that's like <laughs> a fun age you know they're they're so much fun at that age and they're like sponges yeah that's why you have to be careful what you say around them because they remember yeah. everything <laughs> she, she will like i'll tell her something the night before i'll be like yeah yeah we'll just do it tomorrow she'll wake up the first thing she says is like are we going to go to the park? Right. Like, you know, before breakfast, before anything, we're going to the park today. Like you said, <laughs> yeah, you said, you said that. Yeah. She doesn't forget a thing. No, no. Is it, um, is it challenging? I know it is, but is it challenging um, acting as a mother? Because I think it would be because of, of the separation. You just have to be apart. Mm. I think that, um, I mean, it's hard because you're always kind of going to have like a running list, new list, the running like thoughts of, you know, is she good? But um, I found that when I do get to do my work and I come back, I'm just so full of joy and that I think she feels that, you know, but it is challenging at times uh, to have to, you know, finding, finding people, a community is important. So I'm, thankful that you know her dad is is very hands-on and my yeah. parents are always always there to lend a hand so mm -hmm. I takes have, a village <laughs> yeah literally it really does especially if you're working you know if there's not a parent at home with him well um, I, I love that because you're right if you're coming home and you love what you're doing and you're coming home and bringing that joy home mm -hmm. that only has positive effects yeah it's, it's just like you know, you feel full. You feel like, yeah. you know, I did this for myself. Now I can pour into you. Yeah. It yeah. is challenging at times, you know, finding the balance. I never really feel like I, I find the balance, but I'm always working towards finding it. And oftentimes, like if I, if I have a really busy week, I'll 
I'll have a couple days to kind of like balance things out or make it feel more, more like it's balanced, but. I know it, that's tough. I mean, it's tough for anybody that, that is trying to work and raise kids, but I think uh, acting's a, it's got a little extra challenges because you're, you're away. You yeah. Know? And long hours and long hours. Yeah. It, it's taxing. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, did the did the role in Forty Acres was that just straight audition, or did somebody reach out to you? Did you have a connection already ahead of time? How'd the role come about? Straight audition. We really, yeah. I sent in my self tape, and uh, I I haven't worked with uh, with the producer or director before, but um, I sent in the tape, got a call back, and then finally I got to meet. Uh, like it was like a Zoom. Yeah. Boom director's meeting with R.T. Thorne and yeah he's such he's such an amazing artist and director and I remember him literally saying at the end of my audition thank you so much for 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 sharing that art with me you know and just oh, like awesome. appreciation for for what we do as a craft it, it's, it's well it's so interesting with the self-tapes because you don't get any direction. So it's, if, yeah. if, they, if it's either they like it or they don't, you know, and yeah. they can't tell you, well, try it this way or don't mm -hmm. do this, you know, so it's kind of a crapshoot, but it's also a lot less stressful making your own tape because you have control of it. And then you yeah. send in the yeah, one. That, you can kind you, of like set it and forget it. And yeah. sometimes when you're in the room with a, with casting directors or director, you, you kind of leave wondering like, oh, did they like trying to read how they reacted? Right. To it? Yeah. And uh, I'm wondering if they liked it or whatever. But when you send in a self tape, I find, you know, you have kind of like autonomy over your work and you can be like, I like this. Right. <laughs> send it. Yeah. Like this is this is what you're getting. Today. At least that way, you know, this is my best effort. Because, yeah, you know, I've chosen it. it's my best effort. Where if you go in the room, you could have an off day or maybe something yeah. throws you off and it just doesn't go well. And to me, yeah, that would yeah. stick with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in the room, you know, there's there's so many elements going on, like yeah. whatever happened right before, yeah. whatever nerves that you're feeling in that moment or or whatever you came in thinking, maybe you just like blank in that moment and oftentimes you know with a self-tape you know the first one is kind of like you know okay i got the lines like whatever right. it's a throwaway and, and there's no throwaway in the room it's like sometimes you just get one take and they're like peace and hopefully they'll give you a redirection but sometimes it's even just one take and oh thank you so much yes. driving. that would out. drive me crazy because i'd be like i know that wasn't perfect so <laughs> yeah why yeah. why aren't you asking me to redo <laughs> there's like one casting director before when we used to be in the room that i i know every time i'd go in i'd literally have to ask to do another one just just for my own sanity because it was just like okay and that was it like do one take okay thanks bye <laughs> i'm and out I here drove, like <laughs> an hour to get there to do uh a, a a one minute audition and, and that's it, you know? So yeah. that's why acting's so hard. I think mm. so much rejection to it. Yeah. You kind of get used to it, but you need to, you need to be in it for a, you need to like get strength in your skin, you know, yeah. after a I, while you start to get tough skin, but you have to, or you don't mm. stay in acting. <laughs> yeah. So many people don't. And that's I, I know. And don't you figure that's the main, it's not that they weren't talented. It's mm -hmm. just that they didn't have the right opportunity to come at the right time. They got discouraged. Yeah. And then it's hard when, like, for example, I've been acting professionally for eight years now, but yeah. just, just last or a couple years ago was my first time that someone gave me, you know, a, a shot at elite. And for me, that was so huge because it's just like, you know, yes, I had to put in my 10,000 hours, but it also takes one person to be like, hey, I, I see your work. I believe in you and I'm going to take this chance on you, you know, and then it's kind of just back to work from there. But but it kind of reconfirms that that you're you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. 
somebody yeah. saying, yes, you're good enough, we're going to put you in here. That, for me, it would anyway. It'd be like, oh, okay, I'm, I don't suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not even the, the not sucking, you know, because we, we put the work in behind the scenes yeah. to know that our, our work is good, but it's really like waiting for your shot. And, and after a while, like going back to the tough skin, it does start to weigh on you. If you've like, you know, gotten close so many times, but haven't booked something in a year or two. And it's just like to, from the outside looking in, it's like, oh, you're not doing anything. Right. But right. Oh, see the hours. Yeah, all the work you're putting like, in. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, you do some writing as well. Yeah, so I I started writing a while ago, and I just kind of had a couple projects that I was developing. But being in the Canadian Film Center Actors Conservatory last year, I got a chance to actually produce one of my shorts. Yeah. So. I got a chance to write and work with a writing mentor at that time as well. And, um, and yeah, and then we shot them. And right now my short film is doing film festivals. Yeah. It's doing really well. I think, right. Yeah, what, what's yeah. the name of it? It's called Zuri. Zuri. Yeah. What's it yeah. about? It's a story about, it's another mother. I might have spoiled something there, but basically it's a story of a woman who has this dark past and she, she turns from her past and kind of is going the straight route with someone that she met who she fell in love with. And then her past kind of comes back to, to pull her back down. And in doing that, she loses the love of her life. And so now she's in a position where she's, she either wants to, have revenge on on her ex-employer or decide whether she really has changed and um yeah so obviously i spoiled it a little but there are some higher where well. um where did the idea come from so um i think i've always been inspired like i said by soy saldana so seeing colombiana was was something that was really special for me yeah. because you know Oftentimes when you see a, a Latina or Hispanic person on screen who's being portrayed, it's not it's not usually an Afro-Latina. Too. So to see right. a Dominican actress playing a lead in an action film was something that was inspiring for me. So I wanted to create a character who was really like badass like that, but, yeah. but also kind of give her this backstory and give her a depth and being being a mom myself, as I've already spoiled it, <laughs> um, <laughs> add certain elements uh, to the character that really hit home for me. Yeah. And, and yeah, I really wanted to play with the idea of, of do really, really, do people really fully change? And can they, you know, make a 180 in their life? And, and yeah, so that was actually a feature that I started writing. And then when I got the opportunity to create a short film, I'm just like, oh, I'm <laughs> take that. And now in so so now my hope is through through it doing festivals is to use that as a proof of concept and have the script when I finish it. Yeah. <laughs> and really pitch that as a feature in the future. See, I, I love that because you're kind of taking control of your own career a little bit. Because mm -hmm. I'm assuming you would star in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not bad. I I think it sounds uh, terrific. I hope you get a chance to to make it. But I know it's doing really well at the uh, festivals, and and your performance in it's doing really well. Yeah, we've we've got a couple of awards already, um, and a couple official selections. Uh, I I won. I don't even remember what the other ones were because I only went and attended one. So I won Best Actress Candidate Tins. Yeah. which is Toronto International and Hollywood Film Festival, and then a couple of other film festivals as well. So it's been really exciting. I think we have six six awards right now for, for the film. Ah, that's pretty awesome, I think. Yeah. That, that's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. Is there, a, um, is there a genre that you haven't got to do that you would like to do? Hmm. I think, I don't know if there's anything that I haven't got to do yet, but I... I had a lot of fun doing comedy on Slip. 
Yeah. And I think that I'd love to explore that more, like maybe a rom-com or, or something like that. But, but yeah, I had so much fun on that set uh, that I really. Comedy was kind of the one I was thinking of, but it's it, comedy is difficult because it's, I mean, it's kind of like I mean, music, you know, you have to have timing and rhythm. Mm -hmm. and all no, that. but even seeing the scene and how they cut it versus yeah. how like the pacing of it in person is like, you can really create that. Uh, like, obviously you have to be good in person, but, but what they were able to create just in through the editing and the pacing was so quick after watching it. I'm just like, wow, that really transformed the scene. I know and it's kind of amazing how much it changes from when you actually do the work, mm. to the final product. Mm -hmm. Cause they can really, they can, they can help or hurt you a little bit with the, yeah. They the can editing. cut you out the, the, out the whole right. thing, or they can <laughs> they can make you shine. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comedy was kind of the one. I think I think you do good with comedy. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like I don't want to like pigeonhole myself for anything, but I I do still love drama and um, and being like that's not my bread and butter, but I feel like I, I can connect really with, with drama as well, but I think it would be really cool to continue to do comedy as well. I mean, maybe a superhero movie too. Ooh. Just to yes. throw it in there. Yeah. You know, do that. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I'd love to do um, like some sort of athlete film. So a boxer or a basketball Ooh. player. The boxer wouldn't be bad. What if you're yeah. a, what if you're an athlete and for whatever you, you get hurt and you can't continue in whatever your career is, you know, so basketball player, boxer, whatever it is, you can't do it. So you get depressed, you go through a down period, and you accidentally fall into solving crime. Did you just pitch me a, a film right now? I think I, I did. did. I think I did. <laughs> I, I but I'm only good at the pitch. You know, no, from that's here, great. I'm gonna you got to take it from here. You're the writer. <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Solving mysteries. I you can know. Why not? You could be like a um, a uh, athletic Nancy Drew. Mm. Although Nancy yeah. Drew is kind of athletic anyway, I guess. But. I know like uh, someone that I, I follow, Candace Cameron Bure, who does a lot of like Ooh. Hallmark mystery. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, I love her. But yeah, that's what popped into my mind as soon as you said solving mysteries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That actually, the uh, Hallmark's done pretty well with their mystery shows. They're not bad. Yeah. Because they yeah. were just straight Christmas movies and they've kind of branched. I'm waiting because at some point they're going to be Hallmark superheroes at some point. Whoa, I don't even know what that would look like. No, I don't either. I'm sure it would all wrap up in, with a happy ending at the end. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it would. They do a lot of Christmas movies in Canada. Have you got to work on one yet? Have I? Uh, I don't think so. I was going to say one of us probably should know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think so. No, I huh? haven't. Hmm. I, I, I think for a holiday. Yeah, like like Canada, you have to do a Christmas movie. No, I and, think like and maybe like either hockey or figure skating. Um. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> either of those, but. Well, you maybe you could, I could be a coach. I could be the character that's like falling down every time. Well, that's I mean, it. There's your comedy. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> See, we should. I think we need to set a meeting. Like, I, I think we like we need to do some brainstorming. Room. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna write that you said that though, and reach out. Yeah, reach out. <laughs> <laughs> I I bet that the next time we talk, you have you have either done a Christmas movie or are getting ready to do one. I like that. Yeah, put like it out that. there. So That's it's gonna happen. That. I like that. Yeah, I love like. I'd love to do a romantic lead or romantic comedy. So a romantic Christmas comedy. Well, you know, it, all we have to do is, oh, maybe that's it. Maybe you're a you're a basketball player and you have mm -hmm. a, a a horrible injury and you just can't. 
like mentally you can't recover from it. So you leave your town because it just, it totally screws you up. You leave town, you get away. And then for some reason, years later, you have to come back. Yeah. And then, and then the good stuff. happens. The first, (laughs) and then I find that, that high school sweethearts and we reconnect and. That's right. Oh, that's it. You find us, you find a, a love interest. But you also become the coach of the high school basketball Ooh. in your hometown. That's how you get back to sports. Yes, that's how I kind of full circle come that's back right. to, you know, loving the sport that I turned my back on. See, maybe you're bitter and, and you're, you know, mm-hmm. it's just your personality. And then, mm. you know, coming back and coaching. I don't even want to see a basketball. I, I threw on my basketball shoes. Yeah, you're just, you're done. But then yeah, you come never, back and, and maybe work. something's happened to the coach. Ooh, I've got, now I've got an idea. Now we're just so going. The coach of the basketball team, something happens. He can't coach anymore. Mm-hmm. And you're coming back to town and you have some type of weird you know, type of meet cute type of thing going on. Mm-hmm. And he talks you into taking over coaching mm-hmm. and, and then I'm somewhere the along the way. So he's kind of helping still and, and you're coaching and somewhere along the way you, you fall in love. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. It's There's awesome something there. Now. Yeah, there is something <laughs> there. I can't let's pitch this to, to Hallmark. <laughs> You know what's funny is Hallmark has probably already done it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I really doubt they've done a basketball movie. No, no. I think we could do it. Yeah. I don't think they have. I've seen them do, uh, strangely enough, Christmas movies tied to soccer. But that's the only sport that I've seen. See, that's interesting because soccer is like a summer sport. Uh-huh. Unless it's indoor soccer. Whereas basketball, you know, you play it inside. So That's right. Like, you play inside. I think we're pitching it. Somebody's going to hear this. Okay. I'll, re- I'll have my people talk to your people. That's right. Have them talk to me. All I need is like special things because I can't write the thing. I'm just telling oh, you. Okay. Yeah. But then you need to star in it or, and write it maybe. Yeah. You do both. Why not? I'll do it. You know, if, if it was up to me, I'd let you direct. Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. I don't know if they will, though. I think I need a little something under my belt first. (laughs) Hmm. Have you ever directed a podcast? This is my first podcast. Is it really? Yes. Well, hopefully it's not a terrible experience. No, it's been fun. I'm I'm enjoying myself, so... (laughs) I did this podcast. I will never do another. (laughs) Never again. (laughs) Ever. He kept trying no, to put me in basketball great. movies. It was terrible. Yeah, I just kept going on and on. About... <laughs> I no. wanted to ask you about uh, Fat Lady. <laughs> Back to business. Back to business. That's, see, that's the magic of a uh, podcast. Yeah. I'm, I'm here and then I'm over here. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> but Fat Lady Sriracha. Hmm. I know it hadn't come out yet, but mm-hmm. what is this one about? Because just the name, I was like, yeah, I'm kind of in on that. Don't know anything about it. Yeah, so Fat Lady Sriracha was written by the late Ria Habib, who um, who had kind of this passion for this, to tell this story yeah. about a, a girl, a woman who has this passion for cooking and She's trying her best to make her make her way in this industry and kind of move forward in life. But her yeah. father, who is addicted to gambling, is kind of like bringing her back down and just bringing chaos and BS back into her life. So it's a dark comedy about how her father kind of ends up owing this loan shark, Russian <laughs> loan shark money and how she gets pulled in and blackmailed into becoming a surrogate mother. Okay. In order to repay. See, that's a weird blackmail. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I probably shouldn't have said that. Maybe, can you cut that out? (laughs) But yeah, she pretty much she gets blackmailed into paying off his debt. Yeah. And that's how that ends up happening. And yeah, in that journey, she she kind of rediscovers... um, She's trying to find recipes that are going to really make her stand out as uh, as a chef. 
And so she she starts to kind of play around with a few things with cravings that she's having yeah. at the time, obviously. So um, sriracha is one of the, the key ingredients in, in these kind of bizarre uh, <laughs> foods that she starts to make. And they just eventually start to do amazingly. And yeah. It's super funny and and uh, and it also has kind of some heart hitting moments and choices that she has to make. And I mean, it sounds really unique and interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Can you cook? I do cook. Okay. I, I I mean, I'm not a chef, and I can't make it look all fancy and beautiful, but I do cook. Like my mom, my my parents are both Dominicans, so there's like a lot of uh, foods that we grew up eating, like sancocho or you know, stew chicken and stew Dominican food is kind of delicious. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So you know, there's a couple things that I I like to cook often, and then in Toronto, a lot of the the culture is like there's a lot of culture. There's a lot of different yeah. foods you're able to eat and stuff. So. I do cook uh, some Jamaican food. My daughter's half Jamaican, so mm. I cook like Dominican food, Jamaican food, and then like whatever. Well, this this sounds food. delicious. We next time we need to do this in person. Yeah, yeah. With, with food. Mm -hmm. I made lasagna last night. So Ooh. yeah, I don't know if I'll cook today. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a a, a quick lasagna story. Okay, <laughs> I know not too many good lasagna stories, but oh. this one kind of this one kind of amuses me. So okay. I'm um, I'm celiac, so I can't do wheat. You know, I have mm. to avoid uh, gluten. And my uh, my wife works for uh, for for Live Nation. And back in 2008, she mm -hmm. went and um, worked the uh, Olympics in China. So she was she was gone for like six weeks. She was gone. Yeah. And we were we were getting married that year, right? So she was gone for six weeks and she came back and we like got married a couple of days later. You know, so okay. Phew. I thought you were gonna say she came back and she's like, no. Done. <laughs> Done. But so she was worried about me because back then, especially, uh, a little more difficult to eat gluten free. You know, it was mm -hmm. it's not so bad now because everything's labeled, they have to put on the but back yeah, then they didn't different. disclose everything. It was a little difficult. So she mm -hmm. worried about me. But she figured out how to make lasagna gluten free. Mm -hmm. She got the, you know, gluten free noodles made made lasagna. Well, she and I love lasagna, but mm -hmm. I hadn't been able to eat it for years because of the allergy. So she figured it out and she made like tons, probably 10, 15 lasagnas, just pans of lasagnas, and she froze all of them. Aww, and, right so because so she wanted to make sure i had stuff on. to eat and i was like oh i'm gonna have the best month i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> eat lasagna every night it's gonna be great and it was for like a week but then yeah. <laughs> but then, then i'm like opening, i'm opening the freezer and i'm like oh <laughs> yeah too much of anything is never good it, i went a decade and i couldn't touch it I couldn't touch lasagna. Wow. I'm back now. I can, you know, on occasion, I'll yeah. eat and still like it. But I ate so much lasagna in such a short mm -hmm. period of time. When I was little, I, um, <laughs> like, I mean, a child, like, probably way too young. When my mom was, you know, around the house or whatever, yeah. I, um, I ate a tub of butter, like, margarine. <laughs> <laughs> I was chased around the house after that and I did not touch margarine for years like butter nothing I didn't want did I you get sick no butter yeah I think yeah. I mean I only remember eating it and then not having it for like years yeah That's what I remember. it's surprising because so young sick. young kids they like butter yeah yeah, even thinking about it now, how the hell did I like take a spoon and eat oh, butter like that? That kind of makes my stomach upset. Yeah, could you imagine what went through me after that? <laughs> yeah, uh, it would clean you out. <laughs> yeah, TMI. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> so, while we're sharing our, our, yeah, we're we're get we're it's all out there. We're putting yeah. It out. Yeah. All the dirty laundry. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> Whatever. I feel like a weight is lifted off my shoulder now that I've told you and everyone. 
Mm -hmm. So, so going back to 40 acres, did, Mm -hmm. I think you, you mentioned, but did you get to do like a a premiere or did you get together and watch it in a theater? Have you got to, you know, did, did you or, or no? Uh, well, the, the world premiere was at TIFF. So we were there on opening night. That's what you said. uh, Yeah. 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 And that's that's gotta be fun watching it with an audience. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I even, I even talked about that on like one of my posts. The first time that we, like the whole cast got to see the film was in the theater with everyone else. So we got to experience all the reactions at the same time as everyone and see how like, and we, well, I saw it twice. I saw it on opening night and then we had one other screening. So the difference in the reactions and what hit and what didn't and, and yeah, so, so special to have that be our first time. Was it hard to watch yourself on screen? No. Yeah. Some people don't like watching themselves on screen and I can totally understand it. Like if they're not happy with, with how they performed or if they're really hard on themselves. But I think that's one thing that I've learned that like, you know, you, you do your best at that time. Yeah. And then I, there was one day we were shooting that I was like really uh, like not happy with, with how something came out. Like I thought I could have done better or, or something like that. But even with that, it was a lesson for me. Right. Um, and so going into watching it, even the scene that I thought, you know, like I could have done so much better or it took me, it, I didn't do what I wanted to do at right. that scene. Um, you know, I, by then, you know, I've given myself enough grace to be like, this is, this is where I was <laughs> at that day. And that's the best that I did that yeah, day. Yeah. That's a, that's a good way to look at it. I mean, I do that with the podcast. I always watch cause I want to, figure out what I screwed up and then try not to do that again. Yeah. But, I mean, it can be painful at times. You know, there's times I've watched it. I was like, Oh, that was terrible. Yeah. yeah. That was bad. It, it's kind of cringy. Those moments. There's there is. Those moments, but... but most of the time I'm like, yeah, that wasn't bad. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> never, it's never as bad as in our mind. Even when we like, like I remember uh, on the premiere night, my, it was, uh, so I have curly hair, right? So yeah, yeah. I wanted to, I got my hair done and my hair was like these beautiful Hollywood waves and it was raining that day. So the humidity and the rain, my hair grew (laughs) three times the size that it was when I left the house. And so in my mind, I'm like, Oh man, like I, I, I'm not, I'm not feeling a hundred percent with my hair. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? Your hair looks amazing. So everything's always like subjective, you know? Well, you know how that is with, like if people without hair want hair, yeah. people that have, you know, whatever curly hair, they want straight hair. If you got straight hair, you want curly hair. It's always yeah. you're never satisfied. I'm not really, I usually wear my hair natural. So to be able to like, to have made the choice to like have my hair done and it not turn out how I want it to was a little frustrating. That was probably tough. Yeah. But because I would have just done my hair natural, but I ended up loving, like seeing the pictures after loving how it turned out. And, um, but yeah, it just, just took like that one person to be like, your hair looks amazing. It's big, but you know, it looks great. It looks like that's how, you know, back in the eighties, that's all we, everybody wore their hair big. (laughs) Yeah. And you know what? I actually wanted it to be bigger, but I had in my mind, like the way that I, that it was going to turn out. So yeah. Yeah. I used to have that uh, kind of wavy hair back in the 80s, and it would curl in the back. I was kind of crazy. It's hard to tell now, but it was there back then. Yeah, but I'm trying it, my hardest here. I try your yeah. hardest. but And I guarantee you that whatever you're thinking, it was probably worse. But <laughs> it, but I remember those days when the humidity was high, and you have mm-hmm. your hair all, and it would just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I had to, like, it was raining. So when we went to the after party, it was like, I had to go through the rain and then I was just like, yeah, this is just what it is today. It's yeah. like, yeah. I bet it looked great. I bet it was pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. And most people would say it's, it, it's, it, I always say it's, if you've never had curly hair, I understand why you would want it, but it's not always easy to handle. It's, it's, it takes a lot of love and patience. It does. You have yeah. to be, you know, you have to kind of just go with it because yeah. girls do what they want to do. That's and- why it's best to go. Like if you have, like for me, what I've learned, 
I don't straighten my hair too often because I can't determine if my hair is going to stay straight. Right. And I, I, <laughs> you know, I know what's going to happen if I leave my hair curly. And, you know, for me, it's just like, this is the way God made me. So most times or nine times out of 10, you're going to see me with my curls or my hair in a bun or tied up or whatever. But, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how we got on hair, but I'm, yeah, I'm glad we did. Uh, oh, because we were talking about how things don't always turn out. <laughs> oh, that's right. right. That's right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, when when the forty acres comes out and it's out there, yeah. you have to come back so we can we can really dig into Ooh, it, talking. Yes, about it. I would love to. Yeah. I'd love to. Yeah, because I want to see this one. I yeah, it sounds yeah. good to me. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Like what you actually think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll and then we it. can like start the podcast and you can say only good things. That's right. Well, <laughs> cool. Yeah. I'd only tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, on being fair, I tend to find the positives in about everything. Mm -hmm. You know, like That's you go to a movie fact. and I'm like, you hear the reviews. I hate hearing the reviews ahead of time, but you hear them. Mm -hmm. And you're, you know, some movies you're like, okay, this isn't going to be good, but I'm going to find, and you go and you watch and you can find something you like about it, whether it's the story or some of the performances or just a moment, you know, I, I tend to be positive with stuff. Yeah. Honestly, that's true for me too. I don't like to read reviews before going to films no. or even um, sometimes I'll just go to the theater with, without watching the trailer. Yeah. Because I, I rather like make, make my own opinion of of how i like the film yeah. it, and there's times that i watch uh or or read reviews that are like so good about it and then i'm kind of underwhelmed at the theater oh, yeah or so vice versa the opposite, when i'm just yeah. like oh like i would have thoroughly enjoyed this if i wasn't thinking that so many people right <laughs> made these like comments about it you know well but, it's so subjective and you know sometimes you go to a movie and you're in a bad mood you know, mm. maybe that affects how you perceive the movie. Maybe it's maybe it's a, a funny movie, but you're not in a funny mood. So it just kind of, yeah. you know, I always kind of look at it that way. So mm. I go and just make up my own mind. But usually I like stuff. <laughs> you know, it's just me. I just. What was one you didn't like? Can you think of one that you really hated? Let me think that uh, I know I've seen a few. Uh, like I, I tell you the ones that have been bugging me for a little while. Okay. Yeah. Sony keeps making Spider-Man movies without Spider-Man in them. And they're not, they're not like he, they did uh, Madam Web. They did uh, Morbius. Mm. They're, they're coming out with one called Craven. Those are all Spider-Man people, but there's mm. no Spider-Man in the movie. And the movie have not been great. I haven't enjoyed those. And I tried. I did try. And there was moments that I thought were pretty good, but just overall the story, I wasn't. Yeah. You're like, wasn't. there's no Spider-Man. What's the point? Yeah. Yeah. Why it. would you make a Spider Man movie without Spider Man? Beats me. <laughs> Money. I haven't seen any of them, so I can't I can't say anything. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. I won't ask you because I don't want you to have to you might have to work with Yeah, but... yeah I'm I'm gonna stay way away from that. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta yeah. avoid that. But usually I mean, there's so much good stuff out there right now. Mm -hmm. You know, TVs and movies and the the nonsense we have with 2020, even though I think most of us would prefer to go see movies in the theater if we had the choice, mm -hmm. it's not terrible getting them like delivered right to your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were we were actually talking a bit about that because like like having to watch things at home. Like I remember when COVID first uh first happened, you needed to literally have like your vaccination. Oh paper. yeah. So some people had went out their way to make sure that they could go to the theaters. Let's just sure. say, not me. Uh, some some people that I I know. Anyways, yeah. let me not get there. I stayed home but, too. <laughs> yeah, like some people went though still because because it's the experience, you know. Yeah. And so I always appreciate you know what Netflix and popcorn in my bed with my mood yeah. lights on. And well, all you can that. like it always takes me twice as long to watch something because I pause it so much. But you yeah. can sit and talk yeah. about it for a minute or go get food or whatever you need to do. Yeah, and I remember um, some advantages when my like right after COVID when my daughter was really young and just not having a lot of sleep, going to watch 
I think it was 007, the, the last one in the theater. And it was like three hours long. And we went to the late movie. And I looked over to my partner at the time. And I'm just like, I'm so tired. Yeah. I can't do this. Like, you know, going on no sleep with a like a, a baby, an infant. Yeah. It, it just, you know, so at that time, I really appre appreciated being able to watch things from home. But now, like, especially after the TIFF premiere and going to watch a bunch of films at TIFF, I'm just like, wow this is this is it reminded you special you know yeah, yeah. I, and i i never liked the uh first movie in the star wars prequels phantom menace came out in the 90s and i i remember i was so excited i was such a star wars kid growing up and i was so excited when that came out because it was the first star wars thing we'd had in like a decade mm -hmm. and i was like i'm gonna go see it so i went to the midnight showing so excited, so fired up. And I ended up falling asleep during the movie. Yeah. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> you can't fight your body on some things. And sometimes sleep is that. I was just like, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, but I always said that if the movie had been better, maybe I'd have stayed up. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. But it was a midnight movie. Did you watch it again? I've seen it again. Yeah, and it's actually okay. not, not terrible. That's my... If you ask my son, you know, who who grew up in the early 2000s, those are his Star Wars movies. So he likes those better than the originals that came out. So yeah. I kind of get that. It, you know, he's got some context there. But yeah, for me, it's it's the original trilogy. That's the good one. You're basing it off of, yeah. Because that's it's when I was a kid. You see. Yeah. Yeah, you can't recapture the the really good movies you saw as a kid growing up. Yeah. Those are always going to be your favorite movies. Yeah. Even like, I, I don't even know if it's that the films themselves are, are great. Not to say that they aren't. No, but that, that's right. Though. About about the, the feeling that you had at that time, the memories that come up. You know, I used to watch, or we had a couple of uh, DVD or VCO. What do you call those? VCR? VCR yeah, uh, VHS tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The VHS, we had like um, Peter Pan. Yeah. Brave Little Toaster, Aristocats. And oh, one of my favorites. Lot, yeah, so we would watch kind of the same movies over and over. And so now even seeing or or having uh, Disney Plus and, and yeah. seeing those movies, for me, it's like, wow. Like, I used to watch that with my, with oh, my yeah. their brothers when we were kids. Yeah. I'm doing the it songs, with the uh, grandkids. The too. Yeah. I bring them up. I'll bring up one of them with the uh, grandkids. And if they don't, if they're not interested and they wander off, it's kind of disappointing because I'm like, I yeah, kind of yeah. wanted to like, watch it. Ooh, that hurts. That hurts. Yeah. I remember um, I had an uncle who he he had like all the Home Alone movies. Ooh, he had yeah. Home Alone. He had, um, I think it was Flubber and uh, Dennis the Menace. And, oh, like, yeah. So every, yeah, every, every Christmas, all the cousins, we'd have like the sleepover at my uncle's house. And usually my aunt, would be watching us and so all those movies whenever christmas comes around and all the replays start going on it's just like brings back so many memories so i know same no same so okay so i know we got to wrap up so a couple of little Sorry. things before i let you go i'll talk forever i know we're going on <laughs> tangents but i don't mind it at all <laughs> we'll have a part two we'll just yeah. split it up um yeah. anything else that you're working on that we can keep an eye out for so right now, I think it's really trying to get uh, my proof of concept and the script done for my short film and it being in film festivals right now. And yeah, just back to, yeah, back to the grind of, of <laughs> auditioning and and waiting to see what the next big thing will be. If, if they came to you wanting you to do one of the um, more physical reality shows, would you be interested in that? reality shows like what like a survivor amazing race you know something where it's more you, know, you gotta uh, being an athlete would not be a detriment let's say that nah. no not for you I don't think I really like i'm not gonna say i'll never do reality but i there's something about acting and like pouring yourself into a that's role right. and yeah. that's really where where my love for for acting is so yeah i think that's fair I think that's fair. Yeah. Okay, so last thing before we go, um, where can we find you on social media? 
So my Instagram is Milkania underscore M I L C A N I A underscore. And then I'm also on YouTube and TikTok as well. Yeah, you got all the good ones. <laughs> yeah, Milkania Diaz Rojas. So what, whatever you search there. I'm impressed that you're on uh, TikTok. That's a tough one. You know what? I am tr- going to try because I can't say that I'm I'm doing a lot on TikTok right now. Are you I dancing? May- no, no, no. Okay. I may have danced a one time. Okay. They- and then archived everything. So I came to my senses there. Not that I'll never do it, but yeah. Uh, I am not too active on TikTok, but more so on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Instagram's the nice one. You can put your photos, show what you're eating, what you're doing. <laughs> That's the good one. Yeah. You know, where TikTok, you gotta like you gotta be kind of creative on TikTok. Yeah, it's fun though. Well, or at least now that I'm kind of posting a bit more and like yeah. getting to or learning how to create reels and reels are pretty much the same as what we got on yeah. TikTok. So yeah. so making those little videos and editing them and yeah. yeah, that's what I usually do. I'll put clips of of the show, but that's that's not really, you know, like TikTok. It's it's the dancing. That's the thing with TikTok. Dancing is really big on TikTok, but you know they have a lot of podcasts on TikTok. They have, um, like you know, I go down the they, rabbit hole is like cleaning videos. That's my I like, know. Like, There's so much pleasure. On you know, watching something go from like a filthy mess to, to like spotless. It's like so that, satisfying. What do you think what, if, if we do, if we do this live mm. you know, or in person, yeah, we should bring up like the popular TikTok dances and try to do them. Yeah. It would be terrible. I, I'm sure you're a good dancer. I am not. I'm terrible, but it'd be funny. It would be funny. It would be yep. funny to see us try to learn, but I just don't know how long that would take to do. Cause oh, it, it, well, yeah, it'd be a disaster. <laughs> well, you'd have to do it like we practice for a few minutes, but then we got to try it. Yeah, yeah, go and with. then and then post it or like yeah, they, no, yeah, we post so it. no one can ever see it. No, no. Oh, oh. No, yeah. The point is to put it out there. Okay. Uh. You're on your own. Uh, what if I what if I get a dance instructor to help us? That would be fun, like as a class thing. But <laughs> you don't need to worry because I'm terrified of dancing. It's not going. to You know happen. what? I've done it before, so it's not like like me and, and my friends done it. Yeah, so it's not a crazy thing. It's not like the like TikTok dances are not like crazy choreography it's like things that you can learn yeah you just got to take the time to practice them yeah it doesn't mean you're gonna be good though no no no. i can tell you i'm not i learned that (laughs) yeah (laughs) like i remember on one of my you know i was doing a a dance or whatever and what one of my friends posted was like the crying laughing emojis (laughs) like that's not what you want <laughs> like, haha, cute. Yeah, that's not what you that's want. That's what I was going for. Cute, yeah. Yeah. Delete. <laughs> yep. Yep. Literally. Done with that. <laughs> well, seriously, open invitation. You have to come back at some point and give us an update on how things are going. Okay. I will. I absolutely will. Thank I mean, we're so- the first one. Yeah. We deserve a return visit. Yes, you don't forget your first. That's ever. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on one second. All right, I kind of love that one. So apologies that uh, that we ran just a, a little long, but um, Milkania, she was uh, she was awesome. Yeah, and I, I was already a fan of hers as a as an actress, but she just she's a just a good person. That was uh, that was terrific. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, can't wait to see 40 acres it sounds like my type of movie um i think i'll really enjoy it and it's got a love story in you can't beat that you got all the elements right there um keep an eye out for uh zuri as well hopefully she'll get uh get that one made into a full feature i'm sure that uh that's her hope her plan uh, so we'll keep an eye out uh for that I think we hit all of them. I mentioned the bold type. She played uh, a, a role in that. Oh, I meant to bring up the um, 
she did some voice work for uh, Far Cry 6, the uh, video game. I meant to bring that one up. And then she was in a movie, a TV movie called Home Killing um, Queen. And I wanted to ask her if she was the killer or the victim or something in between. But I, I missed that. And we talked so long, I uh, I didn't get to it. But when she comes back. Because I, I tried to make sure we get her back at some point. When she comes back, we'll uh, we'll hit the stuff that uh, that I neglected to bring up this time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with us again this week. So happy that you're here. If you're finding us for the first time, please check out our YouTube channel. It's MeisterCon Pod, and subscribe. It's free. The subscriptions really help us out. Helps us get these terrific guests on the uh, on the show. Our website's MeisterCon.com. You can find right now there's 853 episodes. You can find both audio and video versions of those. So please check us out uh, there. If we're doing anything in studio, if we're going on location, covering a convention, anything we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. So please uh, check us out there. Thank you guys so, so much. Till next time. Bye, everybody.